Oh. There you go. Oh man. How's that feel to get your own? Wow. Oh, it's heavy. It's heavy. It is. It's probably, it looks like a 12 inch right there. Nice. Hey guys, welcome to In It For The Limit. Today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We are starting out in the boat, in the garage. And the reason is, is because we're gonna look at some pre-fishing strategies. Now I don't mean just uh, making sure your rod and reels are rigged up or that you got oil in the engine and gas in the tank. Those things are important to make sure uh, you have those maintenance issues taken care of. However, what we're gonna talk about today is planning your trip before you take it. Now, you could just show up on the water if you kind of have an idea of what the pattern's been lately, uh, you can go out and you can probably find some success. Or you might just get lucky. You could just land on a school of fish. However, if you want to if you want to increase your chances of a successful trip, then take the time to look at your maps, study your maps before you go, look at the weather and the water levels and seasonal patterns, put that all into the mix, and then come up with two or three different plans before you hit the water. Otherwise, what you're going to be doing is sitting out there in the middle of the lake if it doesn't go the way that you initially expect, and you're going to have to figure it out looking at your maps, checking out satellite images, and those kind of things, and you're going to be wasting your fishing time on planning out this trip. So if you just put some time ahead of time, it'll save you when you're on the water. All right, so let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is check out the weather. Uh, you can use any weather app. I use the Weather Channel uh, most often. And don't just look at the weather of the day of the trip. Look at the weather leading into the trip. And for the trip that I'm getting ready to take, the weather is rain. It's going to be raining all the way up until uh, the first pretty day that uh, we're going to have is the day that we're going. So. That's going to tell me what the water conditions are going to be like. Now, I kind of have an idea of the temperatures um, uh, leading up into the trip, although it has kind of dropped. Uh, the, the temperatures have kind of dropped. So uh, those temperatures might fall a little bit. They might stabilize depending on the rain, but it's going to be muddy. So that's going to tell me to expect muddy water and probably rising lake levels. Now, you can check lake levels out. Um, there are different apps uh, depending on what lake you're on. For around here, you can just use the TVA app. It'll give you the predicted data of if the lake's going to be rising or falling the day before you go. And so we're going to have a little bit of rising water due to all the rain. So that's going to tell me uh, a little bit also of what I need to focus on. And then also look at your seasonal patterns. It's spring here. We're getting ready to, the fish are getting ready to spawn. And so that's going to weigh into your decision as well. So for this trip, we got rain coming in. Uh, we're going to have muddy water, we're going to have raising, rising lake levels, and we have fish getting ready to spawn. They're positioning. They're not quite there yet. The last time I was out, uh, they were kind of at the heads of coves, and they were uh, kind of feeding. They're in the feeding mode uh, before they move back and spawn. And that was a couple weeks ago, and it was during a the rain then too. So that muddy water tells me that they're going to be tight to cover. Now, the last time I was out, they were on some stake beds in that 13 to 15 foot range. So that's where I'm going to check first. However, they were real, were real spooky there. So I'm going to check first to see if they're there and two, if they're real spooked. Uh, the next thing I'm going to check, and actually, this is probably going to be my primary focus of the trip, is I'm going to look at trees and cover and, um, and pretty deep water. And not necessarily the, the 20 foot range, but in that 15 to 20 foot range, um, or, or maybe even above, we'll just see how it, how it plays out. But I find that crappie love natural cover a little bit better, uh, especially trees, because they can pull back inside uh, the branches and the brushes and just kind of hide during a real heavy rain when it gets muddy and murky and visibility really drops for them. So uh, that's probably going to be my primary focus. I am going to start with stake beds just to see if they're there, but then I'm going to focus on uh, trees and brush piles and if they're not there my backup strategy is going to be docks 
And uh, the reason docks are pretty nice this time of year is because uh, when they're starting to transition, that's vertical structure um, with all the poles going into the water, and they can hop from one dock to the other as they move back to spawn. Um, so, and you don't even have to have, the other nice thing about that is you don't have to have any kind of uh, sonar technology. You can just pull up to a dock and fish it. And you don't even need um, uh, a fancy, you know, any kind of fancy equipment other than a map, a contour map. Now, you, the better your contour map, the better you are going to be at narrowing your water down. But you don't even need electronics to do that type of fishing. So, But that's going to be a backup plan. It's not quite that time of year yet, I don't think. But we'll check it out just to see. Uh, so we're going to start out uh, looking at stake beds. That's our plan A. Plan B is to uh, look at trees and things. And then the backup is check out docks. And if that doesn't work, we might pull back out on those real deep trees in the mouths of coves, which is where I was last time. So let's look at the next thing, which is I'm going to show you how I have my maps uh, laid out to make it a little bit easier. All right, so we're gonna look at a couple of different apps on the phone. I have uh, all my fishing stuff in one folder to make it easier to find. Um, I have the TWRA uh, link, so I can find my fish information, the TVA lake info, the Active Captain, Navionics, and Fish Smart. Now, uh, I use Navionics a lot beforehand because uh, and you can pay a, a, a $10 subscription, I think, a year. So you don't even have to have a depth finder for that. Fish Smart, you actually have to pay extra, even though I have a Lake Master card and I have a Hummingbird system. You do have to pay extra for that with Hummingbird. So that's kind of a downside to that. I don't actually use it at all. Uh, the Active Captain, however, links up to my Garmin, which is really nice, so that I can uh, have my waypoints on there. So when I'm studying, I can look at where my waypoints are. So... Uh, we're going to look at Active Captain first, primarily because of, um, I want to show you how I have the coloring set up. So we'll look at that right off the bat. I'm going to go into my chart settings and go into my depth shading. And, and Navionics, I think, lets you do this as well. I don't think I have it on this Navionics because I got it, it uh, reset when I got my new phone. But on my Garmin here, I have it set up on my Active Captain uh, 12 to 20 foot is one range. I have that as my green range. 8 to 12 is my yellow. 3 to 8 as my orange. And the 0 to 3, well, that's my watch out. You're going to lose the lower unit range. Um, so I'm going to back out and look at, then I'm just going to pick a spot. To, uh, here's one. I see shallow area there. Here's a really nice point. And that green area is going to be where I fish at most of the year. Now, when they move shallow, I'm going to look at that yellow area. And in the winter, I'm going to back off to where I don't even have it colored. I'm going to look at the edge of that green area uh, for some deeper uh, cover. And what I'll do is I'll just troll that area looking for cover on my depth finder. Now, if you're fishing docks or a visible structure, if you don't have uh, a depth finder, that's why docks are really attractive. But... The nice thing about Navionics and Garmin is the docks show up on the app. I believe they show up on the Navionics. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Uh, so what I'm looking for right now this time of year is that green area. So I'm looking for docks that are in that green area. So this first dock, even though it's at the tip of the cove, uh, it's actually not in as deep of water. But if I move back, you can see, because I noticed when I first looked at it, this dock right here is not only in that green water, but the tip of it, some of those poles are going to be in even deeper water than that, uh, depending on how accurate this is. It's usually pretty accurate. And so this is one dock that you can find uh, real quick on the map and mark that as something that you want to hit. And then you're on, while you're in here, you might as well mark a few other ones. Here's another one right there as you move back, just in case they've moved a little bit shallower. And the nice thing is you can see the creek bed coming through. Uh, now... I noticed out here, way out here at the tip, if they've not moved in yet into those coves, uh, I believe they already have, but it's worth checking out these that are out on the front end of, cove, of the cove uh, but that are in that green. And this one, see how it goes into the other water, just like the last one. So this would be a dock worth checking out. You could skip this dock unless they're shallow and move right along on this side. And here's another one on this side. Uh, there's two more right here in that depth range. And you can just keep moving back um, based on where you find them. Now, if you do find them in a different range, in that different color marking, um, 
then you can search in, for docs in that area. But this is a very quick and easy, using the color feature, uh, depth range on the charts makes it real quick and easy. And you can look at this. The nice thing about it on the phone is I actually do this when I'm laying in bed at night. Um, I study maps constantly of, of places I want to hit, and then I'll mark that down for my next trip. Now, where I'm going tomorrow, I'll just show you where I think I'm going to try it. See all this green water right here? You see a nice little creek bed coming out. I know there's, there's some stake beds in this area uh, that I already know that I'm going to check out first. But if I'm going to follow this creek bed and look for trees and brush, and I'm going to follow it all the way out. There's some nice shallow areas. There's a nice point right here that I already do know there's a tree there. But I'm going to try to see if I can find some more brush uh, in this area. But that's how I'm using my maps to narrow my water down to more productive areas. All right, just for comparison, here is the same area on the unit itself. Uh, you can see how it's laid out. Pretty much the same thing. But you got a little bit more detail. Those contour lines are a little bit finer uh, on the actual unit. <clears throat> when I get out on the water, I can mark. In fact, you can, I believe you can put a waypoint on your, um, you might be able to mark it on the phone. And then that way you can come back and remember which ones uh, you're looking at. But here it is on the actual unit. All right, for another comparison, here it is on the Helix. And we're going to look at the same spot. Now, this one is a touch screen. You'll notice there's a little bit of delay here trying to zoom in. And you can see, you don't see the docks here. So that's a downside to this unit and the Lake Master. I do like the Lake Maps. I think these contours, if you look, I think they're a little bit more detailed. Uh, there's a little bit more finer detail in. Uh, like right here, you can see this little notch right here. I do like this more for bass fishing. I do a lot of crankbank fishing when I'm bass fishing. And so that's the kind of detail I'm looking for. I don't necessarily care about the docks. I can kind of check it out when I get out there. <clears throat> but uh, this is more set up for bass fishing. The green areas are a lot different. In fact, that's probably more my yellow area for my crappie fishing. <clears throat> so uh, if I'm trolling for beds and I'm looking at my helix, I'm going to be looking at the edge of these green areas, the spots. So... I'm going to look at a couple contours off from that green area just because I have it set up differently. But that's just a comparison of Lake Master to the other maps. You do get a little bit more finer detail on the contours, but you also miss out on some of the details uh, like the docks and things. All right, so that's going to be our plan. We'll see how it pays off, and we're going to get to it. All right, so these fish are, you see that one right there and deep inside of it? There's a... There's something big coming towards you. Just drop your rod down. See that one right there? And there's a big bundle of fish right there. There's one coming up for you right there. See it? It's on your minnow. Got it? Oh. <laughs> there it is. You lost it. Oh, man. I'll check your minnow. Yep, you still got it struck back down. There's a bundle of them right there. There's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. I don't know if you can set bundle on camera or not. My hands all over the place. Um, there you go. Stop. You're about in the tree there. Here comes a fish. Feel it. Wait for it. There's a big one right there coming after it. There you go. I spooked it again. Mm. I'll show you how to set a hook. <laughs> he might caught up a fish. Yeah. Just leave the heat on. Wait till you feel a big thump and then just pull straight up. You might need to adjust your uh, drag some, but you can see they're tight. So after a rain, uh, when it rains real, the water's not too muddy out here on the main channel, but uh, after a rain, they'll hold tight to cover. And so that we're having to go inside. We lost a lot of hooks already today. All right, let's go try it again. through fish now let it stop 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 now reel it in a little bit there's a fish chasing you get ready get ready to feel a thump 
Pull it up. Real. Real. Keep reeling. Oh, he stopped. Dang. That was perfect, Evie. He followed you all the way back. He was big, too. I thought it was me. I was watching and I realized it was yours. <laughs> a minto fish. Hey, Mom, I see yours coming through right there. See it right there? You see it? That's a fish of mine. Hold on, I'm trying to get you back in. Oh, just say, I don't know, he'll keep. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> I just say he's in. He has a magic. I'm pretty sure he's on. Yeah, he's almost exactly now. So there is Evie. You're right here, Evie. Coming in. There's a fish chasing you. Me? Yes. It looks like you. I guess that's you. Oh. Uh, Got it, Evie? Yeah. Awesome. Wow, it's a big yeah, one. Yeah, she got a good one. Yeah. There you go. Oh, man. How's that feel to get your own? Wow, it's heavy. Heavy. It is. Bring this way. Bring this way. Bring this way. That's it looks like a 12 inch right there. Nice. Hold him tight. Here. Got him. Can you get it out? Turn this way. I feel you fall in the water. Maybe. Just watch your finger. You can push down on it. If you need pliers, they're. Uh... May I borrow some pliers, please? Yeah. It's probably 11 and a half. 11. He's right at 11. Yeah, That's a good one, Evie. You bought it? But uh, you gotta watch it so you don't get hung up. So you gotta actually watch the screen a little bit. Otherwise it'll... So what I do is I just let it drop till it gets at the right depth. And then I just I click my bell over actually beforehand cause... And then I just let it swing over. See the fish coming up? They look kind of small actually. Might be bluegill. They're inside of it though. Mm -hmm. It would come out. And after a good rain like that, they'll hang tight inside of it. They won't come out too much. Got it. There you go. Oh, I saw him go. Look at him. There he goes. Swimming away. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm just gonna drop it straight in it and see what happens. Probably get hung up right here. Boy, something got mad. Look at him going around there swimming around like crazy. Here we go. Got him that time. That was a lot of small one. No? He was in there deep. I had to drop it into the bush, but if you drop it straight down in the bush, mm -hmm. you're not as likely to get hung up, but you can still get hung up. Eleven inches. Yep. Do what? Just fine. My goodness. Is that a tree or steak bed? I might have that one marked. I've not found anything on the stakes. I went around. There weren't anything on the stakes. I found them on the trees. This is a little piece of brush right here. Baby. 
Good yeah, that's what I'm fishing right now. It's little yeah, though, that one is. starting to color up this one's kind of getting dark Ten. Yep. right under yeah it's yeah. reeled in reeled in yeah reeled in Pull him over. Oh, Don't lose him. Big one. I told you I got home. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this one is 11 or 12. I'm not going to measure him, but he's, he's probably closer to 11. Look what I got. Thought I got something there. Look at there. It's another one that's close to 11. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, it's a good one. Uh, he's just fighting hard. Oh, you know what? It's got hung in some fishing line. That's why. There's fishing line down there. He's not that big. He might be a keeper, I don't know. This fishing line right here is going cause trouble mm. I think he's nine inches yep yeah he's way small but he felt like a monster cause this fishing line right here somebody's probably one of the trollers probably Look at all those on the bottom there, Mom. Mm -hmm. So she it's caught it. Okay. So uh, that right there, Mom, is right back here along the back of the boat. Because I got it. See how I got it pointed that way? Dude, Dude look at all that, Mom. Look at that. Look. Mm. I don't know what those were, though. These are baby little puppies. <clears throat> baby little puppies. Let me see. Get it on camera. Yeah, let me take a picture. Smile. Mm -hmm. All right, throw it back. It's too little.
animal. Mine got messed up around the rod. Alright. Let's throw him in. I know he's a keeper. Good one right there. Oh yeah! <laughs> That's a big John one. That's what I was waiting on. Oh, cool. I don't know he's down there. John okay. you go fish? Let me take a picture. Go fish. Let me get the hook out first and let me take a picture. Alright, you got it? Take picture. Go to the camera. Oh, yeah. Right screen. Top. Got it? Alright, let's see. I bet this is probably 15 inches. Maybe. Uh, yeah, he looks bigger than 14 for sure. I don't know if he's 15. I don't know. No, he is right at 14. I thought it might be bigger. Mm -hmm. Mom, are you gonna help me? Mm -hmm. You gonna help me catch fish or are you gonna <laughs> I got bites this time to do? But you got Do I have to do everything? <laughs> big one <laughs> I bet he wrapped you around a pole there we go that's what I'm talking about Evie take a picture of this you're right there I'll catch that one right there be nice He's got it. no. He took off. He's near falling, dude. Did he? I can feel it. He did. Set the hook. Dang it. There we go. I'm tired of getting that I think I had fish. Paying attention to it out there. Here we go. Yours looks like a keeper. Though. I don't know. Well, I'm high. I think I'm high. Um, I could buy though. I'm high. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. We ended up with around 35 total, and we had our limit of 15 keepers on this trip, and. Uh, they were hind tight to cover, so we did stick with that primary plan. We did check other areas and did find them as uh, good in the stake beds. But this is a good example of why it's good to have several plans in place. Our primary plan did pay off, but it was nice having those backup plans just in case. Alright guys, if you like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe. Until next time, keep chasing that limit.